All right, this is the finally the on-the-water test casting with the Daiwa Catalina. I had frigid weather up here. It's been below freezing since I got the reel, so here it is. Uh, a little recap. It's that 4.9 to 1 gear ratio Daiwa reel that I picked up from the tackle trap. It retails, I think, for about 350 bucks in Japan. It's 189 if you use the TT10 discount code at the tackle trap. They still got them in stock. I checked this morning. It's replacing my Antares as my deep crank reel. So I'm going to, I got. I should mention, I have a DT10. That's what I'm going to start out, off with. And then I'm going to throw deeper and deeper crankbaits. So stay tuned. Uh, if you like this type of stuff, subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot more of the um, indoor like BFS stuff as well. I know there's been a lot of people talking about that. So I'll get to it. All right, I'm going to start with the brakes at... I'll start them at seven. I do have some wind at my back, but um, it seemed to cast pretty decent. I have my side to side play as well, set to um, barely anything. I have it so it's just a smidge of wiggle room back and forth. I can tell you, I mean, this is a DT10, so it's not like it's a huge, um, it's a huge crankbait by any means, but it's really smooth, and I haven't cracked this reel open or done anything to it. Like, it's, it's not Antari smooth, but it's, it's very, very smooth, and it's not distracting at all. Let me crank the brakes down a little bit. I mean, it casts it out there pretty good. It's really slick that this, like the water washing up on the um, the pier right here is, it makes it super slick. So I can't really rifle into my cast. But just like I was on the Antares, I'm running 30 pound braid on here with the leader. I actually took the same exact line and I had to take a little bit of the backing off because this uh, Catalina spool was a little bit shallower than the um, than the Atari spool. I could definitely tell that this is a slower reel too, which it's not bad. Especially a lot of people, they, they tend to over fish their crankbaits. So this will actually help you slow you down as well. But I could definitely feel the power there too. Yeah, I could probably crank that down another one. That was on six, so now I'm at five. And it, it goes up to 20. It's 20 down to zero. If, just in case you're not familiar with Daiwa reels. And once I put on a heavier crankbait, that's why I'm going to be able to test the drag out as best as I can. Yeah, like when I'm test casting like BFS reels, because they're generally faster gear ratios, it's a lot easier than, or a lot faster than this. Okay, this is gonna be my last cast of the DT10, and I'm gonna switch up to an Arashi 18. Yeah, it was starting to go a little faster than um, I'd like, but it didn't. It didn't fluff up at all. I could. I could tell if I crank down, if I put a little bit more effort into it, or if I, uh, if I crank it down a little bit more, that it's going to be, it might backlash. But it's definitely, it's not meant for like lures. I can tell just by the braking profile that it's meant for heavier lures. This is a Reishi Deep 18. I catch a lot of smallmouth on these. I really like them. They're not like a super top of the line crankbait, but I have had no problems catching fish with the stock hook on there either. The stock hooks are pretty decent. And, well, this is on like some time lapse thing now. There we go. Okay, I'll let this one rip. I'm gonna keep the brakes. Actually, I'll put it up to six, back up to six just to be safe. Oh, that's letting her fly. Whew. I mean, it, it took out a decent amount of line. 
and it, it didn't feel like it was gonna be overran or anything like that. But sometimes you can get like your brakes set right to the max where sometimes it's like you get a really long cast and then other times you'll um, your backlash if the slightest little crosswind hits or a bird farts or something like that. But it seems like it it wants to cast far. So like this isn't gonna be you're not gonna be throwing like little square bills with this thing. Oh crap! What's I think I picked up a weed. Yeah, it's a bunch of dead. I really don't want to touch this because it's still cold outside. But. Yeah, it's, that's pretty pretty dead already. Usually the weeds will kind of last in January. Yeah, I kind of threw that one like a dead duck, and it, it still had a lot of control. Granted, I have the, the wind at my back, like I said. Actually, I'll loosen this drag a little bit. You can hear that has that audible click and drag. Let me tighten that up. Whew. It's a little frosty on the paws. It's a it's a um it's not as cold as a straight up like exposed aluminum or magnesium reel. I can definitely tell it's a little bit warmer reel than the Antares, if that matters to you in cold weather. Oh yeah, it's definitely a slow reel. If you're impatient, I I don't know. I, this isn't the reel for you because it takes a long time to get your uh, takes a long time to get your lure back for sure. Oh, I had a little bit of a fluff up there, but it definitely worked itself out. Yeah, it's. You can definitely like I'll I'll get down to like cranking speed. I mean it's super it's it's really smooth. Like you're not gonna find a better cranking a deep cranking reel for 189 bucks. There ain't no way. And like my whole thing about like kind of downgrading a lot of my equipment. I don't feel like I'm sacrificing anything really. I mean I think if I was like in an indoor like football stadium and I was casting, I think the Antares might outcast this thing. But this thing has a lot of control. It's still a long casting reel. It's got a lot of power. It got, comes with a 100 millimeter handle. Other than that, I think the Antares came with like an 85 millimeter handle or something like that. So that's another cost you got to do is paying to upgrade that handle. So like right here out of the box, this is ready to go. All right, let me, right, I'm on four right now. I'm gonna try just like some little lob cast to see how that goes. Yeah, it it didn't overrun or anything like that, but it's kind of it's very it's like it's a very fast spool. So like it's which isn't it's not bad. You're not gonna be deep cranking. You're not gonna be like target casting, like pitching and like other like short roll casting. But it's still like this is actually a type of spool that I prefer for that type of stuff. I like a really fast reel, and then I'll just use my thumb for the. A um, little bit of extra control for braking. Oh, there we go. There's a backlash. And that was, I, I kind of made that cast kind of jerky. And, I mean, it, def it backlashed, but it wasn't, it just stopped. Like, it didn't dig it. Or it didn't have a big nest or anything like that. All right, I'm, I'm just gonna let one fly here. There we go. So the line, I think, yeah, it's freezing up a little tiny bit, but it worked through it pretty good. So sometimes reels will just like, they start to get backlash and then they just like, they're done. Like they, they just, it, it just stops in the air. You have a big old pile of line. With the T-wing system, I think that definitely helps with the, uh, it definitely helps with the, the free flowing of your line so it helps that heavy crankbait kind of pull that backlash out as is before it becomes too big of an issue it kind of fixes itself in the air i always notice that with t-wing reels that it kind of helps it a little bit more than like your traditional line guide would i'm going to swap over to heavy crankbait 
All right, there it is right there. This is actually the hook that I got stuck in my finger uh, this summer. A picture I put up on Instagram. And this, I know this lure does, it casts pretty decent. This is an Arashi 25, by the way, the Deep 25. It casts pretty decent. I don't, I wouldn't want to say it's a slouch by any means, but this again, I picked a bunch of these up on Clarence at Tackle Warehouse. I'm going to turn my brakes up a little bit just to start off with. Not messing with my tension knob at all. <laughs> yeah, it, it was no problem. I don't like to get a bunch of muscle. I could feel I'm just dredging the bottom right now. But I don't like to get a lot of muscle into these deep crankbaits. It kind of overloads this rod. This is that St. Croix uh, Legend Glass. It's 7 foot 11 heavy. But it's definitely, it's not, it's not going to be, I don't think it's really a magnum crankbait rod. It, I don't know. Just for me, it's not. It feels like the, the tip's a little too light. But this definitely has a lot of power. I'm dredging the bottom, just tilling the dirt down there. And it's, it's no problem. I can get a little bit better test of the drag. My, I can tell you one thing, my hand is freezing right now. Alright, let me get in some... I had to imprint myself in the snow a little bit, get a good base. And that went pretty far, even with my weird angle I had on my cast, it was still pretty decent. Alright, I'm going to loosen the drag a little bit, let her... That has that clicking drag. I mean, it's... It's it's pretty smooth. It feel I mean it's like I said it's not a freaking it's not like it's a fish or anything on there but Oh that's yeah that's a, I just threw another duck there. When I say by that it's like it's when the lure kind of tumbles it's not like shooting out it's kind of like that weird tumbling that it does sometimes when you mess up on a casting and crankbait the quality of crankbait definitely does help with that too so i guess this would be a good cold weather tip that I can throw in there as i'm reeling this in so when you're fishing with braid in cold weather it picks up a lot more water than well just in general even in warm water it picks up it picks up more water than like fluorocarbon or mono. So you get a lot more moisture that happens. So your reels can actually freeze up a lot easier. And it's harder to get, uh, it's harder to get ice off of braid anyway. Yeah, this thing is, I mean, it looks, that looks really nice. Yeah, I, I have no problem using this as my deep crank reel. I have no regrets of selling my Antares at all. Which I really like that reel, but this is if you're just going off of retail for the Antares, which is six hundred bucks, I mean this is less than a third of the price. And it's almost all of the reel. Like this is I don't know about long term smoothness and durability, stuff like that. The Antari's been treating me well, even with those micromodule gears. But this is really smooth. Like I I would have no problem cranking with this. Like I cranked with the with an Antares, I mean uh, with a Tatula, like the first generation, and I don't know I don't know what it was, but it just didn't it was like the geariness to it and I got it used. So like the geariness to it was like almost distracting and I couldn't really feel what was happening at the end of my line. So like using a smoother reel and that aspect helps because you can you can feel what's on the bottom and what your lure is doing more. In general, like say if you're throwing jigs and stuff like that, the smoothness of your reel isn't as big a deal. But definitely when you're deep cranking, you want to be able to have nothing distract you or take away from uh, your feel at the end of the line. Yeah, this thing's just like no thumb. I got that. Oh. My bad, I turned that, the brakes up, let me, okay. 
Now I'm really going to test. I put the brakes down to five right now. So by the time we get this back in, that is one thing I see. I don't really want to say it's a con, but it's kind of an expected thing is with such a low gear ratio, if you're trying to like, if you're just trying to work points, let's say you're trying to stay off of a point and you're casting about, you know, you're casting about 60 yards and you're trying to work only like 20% of that, I mean 20 yards of that point and you want to rush it back to get back over there. The speed could be a, an issue, but I think overall it's it's definitely worth having that power for sure. There's some people that get tired like deep cranking if they're like, they're casting around big baits and stuff like that, but then reeling them in and such. There's like no fatigue at all that would happen, even in cold weather. There is a little bit of fatigue in my right hand for it being so freaking cold out here. Yeah, oh. Yeah, I got... Right there, I got to my back. And I don't usually do casts like that with the Antares. And I didn't take any of the braid off. I just took some of the backing off. So that's, that's casting this bigger bait. I don't know, a lot of times like when I use deep cranks in the, like, the fall time, it's pretty windy, so I don't really know how much the wind is adding distance, but not too bad. So, I mean, me just saying it straight up right now, I'd say it's definitely, if you're getting into deep cranking, it's definitely worth it. You can pick up, you can pick up this reel, brand new, 189 bucks shipped from the tackle trap, and you can get a there's a there's a lot of decent deep cranking rods on the market right now like 150 bucks or so i mean you might be able to find used ones or whatever get some a little bit more expensive some something a little bit less but to get like a actually like good good quality deep crank setup for less than 300 bucks that's like i don't want to say it's super high end but as good as you're definitely ever going to need it's pretty good. Yeah, let me. I'm gonna try one in this long cast on here. There it goes. Yeah, it's. I have no problems with this reel at all. It's a pretty niche reel, so I was only gonna throw crankbaits on it. I could throw some swim baits, I guess, but my hand is just absolutely frozen right now. But overall, I'd say it's it's definitely worth picking up if you're looking for a big bait reel. Um. Or a deep crank reel for sure. And it has a has a really it's I don't think it looks bad at all either. It's it palms well. It's just kinda like the first generation Zillion TWS. Pretty much. It's a little bit better. They they slimmed it, I think they changed ergonomics slightly. But it's not bad reel at all. It's probably one of the best pickups you can get, like right now. I'd say, like bang for your buck. But thanks for watching. Uh I'll be getting some more footage with this reel in the in the springtime, which is about April for me. So you don't really see much about the actual performance on that. I will be breaking it down and showing the insides, cleaning it out, and stuff like that. But it's a sol that's a solid buy for 189 bucks. It's I don't know. I just don't know what else to say. It's definitely it's a steal of a deal for sure. So. Um, if you're looking forward to like the internals of it, see how the drag clicks. Make sure you uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I hit that uh, when I upload that video. Thanks.